Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett is with us once again from Lake Oswego in Oregon. And uh, today we had a little bit of problem getting her on because, well, it's Windows versus Mac. And I use a Mac and she uses Windows. And I wasn't thinking of what could possibly be wrong with her picture not being, well, I figured it out because I also have Windows over here. And it's <laughs> always a problem. But it's frustrating, isn't it? I mean... You know, all for all we've done. You used to you plug the phone into the wall and you talked when it rang. Yeah, that's all. Uh, and and if it wasn't working, you looked to see if it was plugged in. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I liked about the old phones, you know, what the advantage was to the old phones. Let's say you got into a fight with your wife, and you wanted to throw something. <laughs> what what was it you threw? You yanked the phone out of the wall and threw it across the room. Now, then, you just picked it up because it was. Did you ever really do that? Oh yeah, I got I've gotten mad not necessarily at a wife, but you know one thing or another, and just yanked the phone out of the wall and threw it against a uh, threw it against a wall, and it didn't break. It was made out of bakelite. That stuff. You remember those old phones? They didn't break. You know why they didn't break? Because they were owned yeah, by Yeah, but the, it made a dent in the wall. I know, but the reason they didn't break is because they were owned by the phone company, and they didn't want those phones breaking. And you <laughs> pulled it out of the wall, and you always knew how to screw those two wires back into the socket, you know? Uh, are we talking the old I saw days? a commercial somewhere. I saw a commercial somewhere the other day for getting replacement parts for your smartphone one of the big deals of which was a cracked glass. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to live with a cracked glass. It would drive my eyes nuts. Yeah, yeah. But I, I guess I do. Yeah, well, uh, 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 people crack. Uh, the glass is pretty hard to break. It's called Gorilla Glass, but it does break. And then you just they go to these places. I thought that, that was glue, uh, Gorilla Glue. No, the, the grill, <laughs> there's also Gorilla Glass. Do not mix it up with the Gorilla Glue, okay? And, I see. Okay. And, 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 and uh, the, 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 you know, it's pretty hard. It's kind of hard to break a phone. I was out, I was voting the other day, and I dropped my phone, okay, uh, from about neck level. And uh, I picked it up, nothing. It's fine, you know. I mean, they, they're making those things as strong as AT&T used to make those phones they gave to you, and you had to give them back when you no longer needed them, right? But, uh, and then all, I don't of, remember that all of a sudden me. there was a lot of deregulation of AT&T and so on, and one of the things that happened when they deregulated uh, AT&T was they no longer made the phones. So now you had everybody else making the phones, but they were cheap-ass phones. I mean, these little phones we buy now, even the, the most expensive ones, are just, they're nothing. They're like, you know, they're like piffle. I mean, it's, uh, am, I, am I yearning for the old days? Is that what I'm doing here? You know? <laughs> yes, you are again. <laughs> By the way, have you... It's okay. You're allowed. In, You're... In, in, your, in all your adventures with health, okay... Have you ever run up against something with, that, with what? Remember, with health? With health. That with, did you, you say with health? Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever run okay. up against what I had to do yesterday? I had to go to a balance clinic. I don't know what you did yesterday. I had to go to a balance clinic. A what? Balance clinic. For balancing. Testing your balance. <laughs> I think so a while back, yeah. yeah. And they blow hot and cold <laughs> air in your ear. Oh, I didn't know. I've never been through that. That's new. <laughs> I mean, you know, what I said is the last time. And so how do you balance? Yeah. The last time somebody ever blew in my ear, it was under different circumstances, you know. Um, and then they do other things and you walk out of there. You're dizzy. You're just reeling, you know. But I don't. I don't See, have I don't have much balance at all to begin with. And so I learned, you know, long before I had such problems and got this old. Yeah. I had read a really excellent book on aging that if you watch old people walking along, particularly in New York, when the buildings come right down to the sidewalk, yeah. you'll see old ladies and old men walking along next to that wall, the building wall, mm -hmm. and they'll touch, just a little bit touch the wall all the time mm -hmm. to check their balance. Mm -hmm. 
And I thought that was really smart. And the doctor who wrote the book thought that was really smart. And so I kept that in mind. And now that I'm even in the house, a little shaky on my feet sometimes, I touch the wall everywhere mm -hmm. I go. Mm -hmm. And I wash the floor. You know, I have this oxygen concentrator with a big, long cable. And you can't entirely keep it from being in front of you when you're walking down a hall or something. So I'm extremely careful watching where that is because I love my house is carpeted. Well, old bones can break. So I'm very, very careful of that. But I always touch the wall as I walk along. And more and more, I need it. It's, it's not like I'm really going to quite fall over, but I feel shaky. When so I, when I use it all the time. When I get up in the morning, I get out of bed, <laughs> and then the next thing I do is I stand up. My, this doctor told me yesterday, wait about a minute. <coughs> That's a chore, I, isn't it? <laughs> well, well, once you get up, you know you're still here for another day. Uh, but then I stand up. Or at least part then, of it. Then I stand up, and the first thing I do is I reach for the handle on the door to steady me. That's, mm -hmm. you know. And then I'm fine, but I, I you know, I, I'm not, go I, I keep close to a wall, but I don't touch the wall. Yet. Well, you should, if you all go along and just kind of, you know, touch it like this. Where's my hand? Here we go. Yeah. You know, as you walk along, just tap the wall. It helps keep you upright. Well, here's the other thing. The reason I thought it was my ears, okay, was if I stood up, <coughs> I was a little lightheaded and so on. But then it started to go away. Now, if I then close my eyes and just stand there, I start swaying. I, I, I'm kind of, I have, so my eyes are really my sense of balance, not my ears. And, um, absolutely they are. Yeah. Well, at this point, I mean, your ears, when you're, when it's dark, your ears are, are giving you the balance. I was not getting that balance. He said, but he did all the tests. He said, I can't find anything wrong. So I don't one know. of the things I do that relates to what you're saying is, you're right about eyes when they're closed. And when I get out of the shower and I'm drying my hair, mm -hmm. um, I, the towel comes like maybe only this far mm -hmm. and my eyes are open because if I, if I cover my eyes so that I can't see, mm -hmm. then I get off balance. As long as I can see light, I can, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. So and also in the shower, I always have an arm or an elbow next on the wall to keep me from teetering one side or the other yeah. well you know i mean i i just i'll tell you what bothers me they don't tell you these things when you're young that well, you need to know when you're old the, you know somebody it, it, well if you didn't have other things that were happening to you perhaps the thing you should do now because of your experience in it is write a book about the oh please the owner, everybody the owner, write a book uh, no, owner, come on no the owners nobody book. everybody right. who says that has never written a book yeah but the owner's guide to getting old, you know, to an old body. <laughs> yeah, it, like it just, it, you know, it's not a, it's not a how-to book or anything. It's a manual, you know. Now, if you yes. if you need to walk, you hold on to the side of the building and blah 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 blah. You know, because the thing I'm finding, you know, what's bothering me, and I hate to talk to you. If people have listened to us before. You know that Ronnie uh, has uh, uh, not that long to go. Okay. Uh, she has cancer, and um, uh, but I, the so I, I feel bad when I even 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 mention these things. But I just find that what's bothering me as I'm getting older now is I'm beginning to find like you know, I got the neuropathy in the feet, and I got the balance problem, and I got the this, and I got the that, and I don't know if I'm capable of doing the things I once did ten years ago. I walked up. Uh, about 2,000 steps in China to get to the top of a, of a rice field, okay? I don't know if I could do that today, you know? and It's not that you don't know. It is that you cannot. Well, I don't know. I might be able to, you know? I mean, I just don't know. I would bet but, not. I would but, bet big-time money you can't. But the best <laughs> part about it is with these steps going up to the top of the rice uh, field, uh, they actually had guys you could hire for for uh, twenty bucks who would take you up in a carriage. They would to carry, carry you. They, they would carry you up in this little contraption. Yeah, yeah. Think of how strong they have to be. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, that I couldn't do ever. <laughs> okay, that job. But 
Uh, and I don't know yeah. if I can drive anymore. I haven't driven a car in maybe four years, and I'm <laughs> I, I worry that I just don't know how to drive anymore. Do you want to hear a funny little joke, a little tiny joke about yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. I still have my car. And it's parked, if you walk from my apartment, you walk straight out and the car is parked in the parking lot there. Mm -hmm. And it's <clears throat> not extremely hard for me to walk because of the COPD that I can't, yeah. I have to go so slowly and it takes so long. Yeah. And I was taking, and I also can't carry anything very heavy without losing my breath. So I take the garbage out when it's only half full. Mm -hmm. But then it was still a walk and it was so then I realized, since I park right across from my little walkway, mm -hmm. I could take the garbage, put it in the car, get in the car, drive the 500 feet to the recycling and trash can. <laughs> okay. All right. And well, empty that out. Yeah. And then what I would do is, because it's a circular driveway all around the complex where I live, I would just keep going straight and go all the way around. And, you know, when I was driving, a couple of times I went off to a nearby shop for a few minutes. Um, the, <clears throat> once I was in the car and driving, I felt I felt completely comfortable driving and in control, and I wasn't worried, except I wouldn't go on a highway. And then I would come back and go to my old parking place. But I'm pretty much sure I'm done with that now. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just, you know, I think that, yeah. And, and by the way, I've got to say, my neighbors are wonderful. They bring me cooked food. They bring me my mail. They, they take out my trash. They, um, they cook. Did I say they cook yeah. food for me? Um, and, uh, and shop for me. And I have a shopping service every other week now and, and a cleaning service. And it just, it makes all the difference when you can't do very much for yourself anymore mm -hmm. to look around the house. They were here, the two women were here yesterday to clean yeah. on Tuesday and we're here to clean. And, you know, you can see where the vacuum cleaner marks are, where they vacuumed the rug. Yeah. And I saw them, they were dusting the window sills under all the windows. And I couldn't get to all those things before I hired them. And it makes all the difference it just to know that your house is clean and and your bed is changed and you know and I can still do the laundry. It's no big deal to put that in and fold it up afterwards. But it it just God, it just makes it, if people can't have that, it, it's so you feel so grubby when you're already feeling grubby and old. You know. <laughs> well, you know the thing is the thing is that uh, here we're we're talking about you know griping about what it's like when you get older which is what your time goes by uh dot net uh, uh blog is about uh but and there are probably some people not listening now because they tuned it in and went what am i listening to this for and all i'm saying is and that's okay at their age that's okay at their age alex yeah well it's just you know you should listen because you're going to need this information later because you're going to come to uh, yeah like but I you did. know you and I didn't have it, and we're getting by. We're figuring it well, out. No, but at age 80, I suddenly realized I am starting to diminish. I, you know, I went a long time without feeling I was diminishing. Starting? Huh? Starting? Starting? Well, wait a minute. At 80? At 80, yeah. I think that prior to this, I really, I would say maybe the last five years I've had a few issues. But now I've got enough issues that it impacts my mobility, my uh, uh, my going out. You know, I don't. I and on top of that, on top of that, let's talk about this, okay? You probably don't know about it because you've had um, uh, because of, of what's going on in your life. You're spending a lot of time indoors because it, it's not as easy for you to just go out now, okay? But for the rest of us. We didn't have that until now, and there is a thing, and I talked to my two doctors about it, the one I went to yesterday and my GP. I said, I think I have COVID fatigue, uh, and it is, I, I'm tired all the time. You know, I, um, 
all these things. And the doctor yesterday, the balance doctor said, oh, I've got it too. He said, everybody's getting it. It's kind of a COVID fatigue. It's you're tired of not being able to really spread your wings and go out. You know, you, yeah, you can go out to the front of your apartment house, walk the neighborhood a little bit, but I can't go all the way downtown to buy ravioli. I can't go down to Washington Square Park to sit there and watch the chess players. You know, I'm stuck here. I'm not going on that damn subway. Well, you know, I, th I, think, I think a bit too much is being made of it without dismissing it um, because it is. It is. It is how we live. And if you don't live that way, you and you will die, and so will other. You will cause other people to die. It will be your fault. What and you, you can't do that. What do you mean being stuck? And you in have it? to. Yeah. And you can complain. I don't care if anybody wants to complain about it. Go right ahead. But you know that gets kind of boring after a while. And there have been other times in your life when you've been bored to death too. Um, and it, it different different. Eras in our life bring different difficulties to deal with. Yeah. I mean, you and I have not raised children. I'm here to tell you that you would barely have made it through fatherhood. I know you too well. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm not so sure about me and motherhood either. I, I, I don't know about that. I, I think you're wrong. I think. Yeah, I, don't you remember what we used to joke? We used to joke that we couldn't have children because our only experience was put the food and the water down on the floor and let the cats to do what they do. <laughs> well, no, you don't have to you don't have to give a kid a bath. He'll clean himself with his tongue. You know, I mean Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I would have made a fine I would have made a good father. I, I think I would be attentive and I would be doting and all of those things. Uh, but I, I, I don't think I could until have... Until the next the record program. album showed up at the door. I don't think I could have done that and had a career at the same time. You know, I, I think that what I do is so much egotistical that I need to have, if I hadn't needed to have all the focus on me in order to accomplish what I accomplished in life. Does that make sense? Well, you know me. You know it's true. <laughs> you know? No. Yeah, you know. So, you know, you'd be saying something to me, and you go, "Alex, are you listening?" I would go, "No, I'm just thinking about myself." <laughs> <laughs> and here we are at the end of our lives. Well, you yes, know. yes, one way or the other, you know. Uh, but I mean, I—it's just I, I this diminishing of my abilities physically. Uh, bothers me, you know. It, 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 I'm going. Is this the kind of fun I was supposed to have in my? Is this the golden years? What's gold about? Well, you know, there's an awful lot of things that are good that you didn't have time for, or the, uh, or didn't make time for when we were younger. Mm -hmm. Like hanging um, out with the grandchildren. <laughs> well, I'm, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's uh, grandchildren are particularly dangerous at this point um, because they don't know when they're sick and they can give it to their grandparents. Yeah. yeah. And grandparents die. So uh, that that's really a fraught relationship right now. Yep. Um, <clears throat> but um, but they're different. Play what they don't teach us throughout life, and it doesn't have to be banging on your head lessons. Um, but just to come up now and again, mm -hmm. is that what's what's the song? It's an Ecclesiastes, the the Bible verse or something about for everything yeah, there's, there's season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean that stood the test of long, 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 long time. You know. Yeah. yeah. And it's real. We should bring it up more often. And maybe that's you know I've never been a religious person. I'm still not. But maybe that's a reason to pay a little bit of attention to those things in yep. the Bible. Yep. Is that when we're very young, you know, we're running around and learning and there's all this stuff we've never seen before and it's all exciting. And we get to midlife and then that's our serious time and raising children and planning for the future. And what they leave out mostly mm -hmm. is the old. And what are the virtues of that? Yeah. And they're of virtues to it you know yeah. i mean the only because my biggest problem now 
in terms of what I want to do and can't is that there's something about my diseases accelerating now, getting worse, Mm -hmm. is that my brain isn't working so well and it won't pay attention. So it's very difficult to read. I can't sustain reading. So I pick up a book and I really want to read whatever's in that book. But my head just, I, I know each word, I know what the whole sentence is, but then I have to work real hard at its actual meaning. And that takes so long, I forgot where I started. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, uh, let me let me ask you a question here, uh, since it's, you know, we're, we're a little less than a week away from uh, the election day. Uh, did you vote yet? Of course. Okay. I, but we, we went out and we, so vote. we vote. By, we vote by mail for the last 20 years in Oregon, but my neighbor took mine with hers to put at the drop-off box because we don't trust that guy that runs the post office to get things anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we decided uh, Marjorie wanted to go vote and we had, we could just walk down the street (coughs) and we had to wait in line for an hour. And while we were there, uh, the polling place was passing out water to people who needed it, and uh, uh, nice. uh, and nice. uh, uh, some local business came by and gave out free sandwiches to anybody who wanted one, and it was uh-huh. just it was a, it took an hour, but it was a wonderful experience, and everybody was talking to each other in line, and you know, and then we got there and we did our little voting, which was pretty <laughs> fast to do, um, and when we left, Marjorie said. I feel so good about that," she said. "I haven't felt so good about anything in years, that. huh?" People have been saying that all over television, and I think all the ads, starting with the Lincoln Project, but there are tons of other organizations doing them too, saying, "Plan your vote, plan your vote, plan your vote," and I think it's really working. Yeah. And the numbers are showing it. More people vote than voted. I don't know if the whole election, but half the election. Last time, yeah, um, and I, th- I think that people understand that this is, in our lifetime, and we're talking eighty years, you and me, mm-hmm. in our lifetime, this is the most important election there has oh, ever I, been. I I would agree with you. Yeah, yeah, I would absolutely agree with you. No question about it. You know, uh, but uh, so, um, you know, encourage everybody. Go, 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 vote. Well, you said to me a while back, I think it was, that you wish the only wish you have is that you'll live long enough to see Trump kicked out of office. And I yeah, think that's a long I, way th- I think there's a good chance that's going to happen. You know, I, I <coughs> well, it, the I, thing I, is, he doesn't leave until the end. If he's defeated, he doesn't leave until the end of January. Which means he can do a lot of that's damage. Nice. Days. Yeah, he can hmm? do a lot. Of, he can do a lot of damage in that time. Yes, and and I don't know that I can last that long. You know. Well, I'm getting really tired. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm hoping that you are around that long. To me, that's it's an important, <coughs> important thing. I won't be able to jump up and down, but I'll raise my hand. <laughs> <laughs> You'll. Blink once if you're happy today, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, boy. Did you read my blog post today? No. Wednesday? No. Oh, you should. It's called Old Lady Fancy Pants. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, I'll, uh, that I, that I got to read. By the way, everybody, <laughs> if, if, you, if you haven't looked at her blog, uh, it's it's there. It goes back years on there. Oh. Uh, and it's 16 called, years, 16, 16 years. years, time goes by it's a long dot time. net. And, uh, it's a ruminations about what it's like to get old, which is kind of what this particular <laughs> episode of Alex and Ronnie or Ronnie and Alex or the two of us, uh, was all about. Hey, listen, kiddo. I see, you know, it's considered yeah. a no, no. It's considered a no, no generally in culture, American culture to talk about, old age ailments. And I just say fooey. There's a whole lot of old people and we need to know what goes on. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Thank you. Good to see you.